Okay, I'm going to try to call Rick Grabneck about the video, his hoax video. Let's see what happens. calling or not? Hello? Hey Rick, how's it going? Alright. Let's see. That's me. So how you doing? What's new in your life? Uh, I'm just getting ready for work at 5. Ah. So, tell me about it. Tell me what's going on with this. What's the whole story, man? Hello? What are you doing, man? Hello? I can hear. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Is that any better? Why don't you hang up and I'll call you back. I can see where this is going. Can you hear me? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, you're you're a little low, but. Huh. No, you're better. You need to get, get your voice close, your mouth closer to the phone. So tell me what's going on, man. What's the story behind your uh, your first your two videos? Oh, which one? <laughs> we'll start with the first one. Oh, I did. How, how did? You, I, mm -hmm. So, so you fake these, right? So, um, how did you? Um, Fake the first one. Was your who was your priest and or, or pastor involved with the? No, he was the one. That's my ex brother in law. Oh, he's the one. So did you? So you pulled a first one as a prank on your your brother in law? Yeah. Then when I when I played the video back, I realized how good it came out. Then I let him see it. And he was just like, he was just bored that he's this thing, you know, was out like that, you know. Yeah, you did a pretty good job that first one. I mean, it's the the, the, the screen, the yeah. mesh screen and everything. It's like it really gave it the kind of like could be feel to it, right? Yeah, if you if you listen real closely in the first one, you'll actually hear my wife in the background with the pots and pans in the other room. And really? There, but there, there were some other giveaways in that video. I was, you know, like the time delay, you know, like it's going back, and there was like that time delay. Huh. So there were some, you know, some people had dismissed that as a glitch in the, uh, whatever internet way it recorded, or like they, someone said, well, I was probably looking down for <laughs> You know, it's like, but, you know, as I listen back to that, there were just so many things that's like, that were convincing, but 
that weren't convincing. You know, like someone said, well, how that it, it has to be real because uh, look at the movement. You know, you know, like sometimes the the legs look like there was goat legs. It, it's just the way the light bends. Well, I know from my experience, my encounter, the one crawling up the ravine, it was very it, it vibrate, it vibrated like a. Uh, uh-huh. electricity through it so I mean a lot of people a lot of people thought it was a hoax but a lot, a lot of people who had real encounters would say it could be you know what I mean yeah. it could be Mike because the, the video uh, was recorded after I actually had an experience and that was with, with me and my wife when we were walking that trail what we saw alright then it was it was long after that I came up with this idea of, well, you know, this is what I could slap together. And what I did is I called my brother-in-law. I just had the recorder on, you know, I just called him. And so I took this, the recording and I, I saved that. Then what I did was I, uh, I put the recorder next to the iPad out on the patio, the enclosed patio, and put my iPad up there. That's why that that was, you know, number two, the thing that was overlooked is the iPad never moved. You know what I'm saying? So all you could hear was my audio. So it still seemed like I was in the room, and that's what threw everybody off, you know, they said, well, if he's inside, then who's outside, you know? All right. Well, I'm actually outside, I'm just uh, choreographing to a, a pre-recorded conversation with my brother-in-law, so after I did that, I sent it, and I let him see it, and he was all freaked out, and I, I tried everything not to laugh, because it was like, He'd known me for 40 years since I was a teenager, you know. And he knows I'm for he knows I played pranks and I still got him, you know. He was like, Hey, I can't believe that you got me again. And then he said, You'll never get me again, you know. Right. And I said, Never say never because people have said never and I've got him again. <laughs> right. So what happened is uh, this adrenaline rush. You know, after I posted it, somehow Jerry Klein got a hold of it. And, uh, so it turns into, it's like uh, taking a drug, you get this rush. It's like, I gotta, I gotta keep this going as long as I can, you know. And some people are hooked on certain drugs and they, they gotta take another hit of their drug, you know. And that's kind of what it was. It was like, I was so amused with what I had thrown together in, in such a short time. It's like, how could I, you know, let, let this die? And that's what happened. I, I just kept getting more hits. Oh, you so, got, you're over a million views. <laughs> yeah, more hits, and but I kept digging myself deeper with the questions. Like when I did an interview with you, if you watch my body language, if you, when you asked me a question about what my wife saw, you could tell that I was more... Um, my body language was more, uh, uh, less BS about what I really saw. I kept redirecting the attention towards the real event more than I was trying to answer, you know. And that's why when you were trying to get back to the, the thing out in the yard, you know, when it wasn't real, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, explain it with confidence. It was like a lot of real vague with my answers and stuff like that. Yeah, you were. <laughs> you were vague. I, I did notice. Yes. I did that notice was, that. I just assumed it was just you, so. Yeah, some people say, well, he was nervous. It's like, no, it's like, uh, when something's not true, your, your body kind of reacts because it's, no, it's not, it's, you know, it's not true, you know. And I've had other situations where, I've had people, I've had them pranked for 20 years before I said, hey, this is a prank, you know, or they found out. Right. They, were, they were kind of mad, but it was like, they said, for all these years, we thought, and I'm going to give you an example. Was, uh, 
right when my dad was dying. Uh, was, I think it was a few days before he died. You know, he, he got the hospital bed downstairs, you know. And so the other relatives, sister and stuff, would come over. And back then I was, you know, practicing, uh, what do you call it, magic shows and all that stuff. And uh, I'd buy these magic kits and different things. And uh, what I did is I, they have this line, it's called invisible string. So you could like tie it to something and you can't visibly see it because it's like a spider web. It's so small. Right. What I did is I, it was a rocking chair. We had a, we had wooden floors, you know, and uh, I tied this piece of string to the rocking chair and weaved it all around down the hallway and to the other room around the corner. And I was just like, you know, I was in the other room and my dad and my sister and brother all seen the chair moving. They said, look, the, the, the rocking chair is moving on its own. And they're all freaked out. And the nurse was there. And, you know, it was like, to see, to see re their reaction, it was kind of like, you know, why do you think I did? Did you put your mouth closer to your mic, man? Yeah, I'm all the way up. Is that better? That's a million times better. Okay, I was on the wrong end. So, huh? so when I hooked the string up to the rocking chair and I was moving it with my whatever my finger or my foot in the next room, they didn't see that because it didn't. I didn't have to use that much movement. So now this is after your dad died. It was a few days before. Oh. And he was like, look, that's, uh, my mom died three years before he did. So he goes, look, that's, you know, that's, uh, there's mm, Pat and, you know, and, you know, in the rocking chair. And I didn't say nothing. He was like, I'm thinking, no, I'm just, I got this string t rigged all around loopholes, you know. I ran it through the those um, metal eyes that screw into the wall. So I'm in the other room and I'm moving it. So I'm really moving the chair with my hand and nobody sees that. So they're all thinking it's a ghost in the chair, you know. So they don't know what to think. They're just like, the, the nurse saw it and they just kind of, yeah, yeah, okay. Now it's, you know, but I could make it rock faster and more intense. So they so my brother-in-law, my brother-in-law, at the time, this is my Heather's brother-in-law. Um, he felt something wasn't right, you know. So he went home, and so it was like six months later. I I came out, with, I you know I had to I had to disclose that the, you know the rocking chair was me. And he goes, I knew it. I knew something wasn't right. I thought, then if you knew something was right, why didn't you investigate it and call me out, you know? See, people, uh, when they can't figure something out, they kind of react like, well, I knew it all along. Or, they're not always going to know it all along. Because I was a professional at pranks, you know? And so as time went on, I did less and less pranks. So, so after they found out it was me, they were like... <laughs> You son of a... <laughs> you know, they said, I should have known it was you, I should have known. It's like, D you know I can p pull pranks. Well, why didn't you know? Because I had done it so well. And it's such a little, you know, something so simple in a short amount of time. And the timing of it. And uh, so, you know, six months later, I disclosed it. And they kind of laughed it off. And like, you know, we... I th I thought it was you, and it's like, no, you didn't. You know, right. I'm the type I would investigate. That. I would have looked at the chair to see if there's anything connected to the chair. You know, some people did just stand back and look. The chair is moving. Well, we got to ask questions. You know, you know, look at the chair. You have to investigate things. You just can't say, well, this is happening and that's it, and I believe it. And nobody investigated it, so it that's why it went. You know, it was a mystery, but my dad thought it was my mom and trying to communicate. I thought, well, I can't tell him now because, you know, 
he ain't gonna be around much. I don't wanna. He can he can catch me later on the other side. So, you know, and there's been other pranks like I fake my death on a boat. You know, me and my, me and my wife, and some of these pranks have backfired. Um, I was on a boat with my best friend. He was a professional drummer. Um, me and my wife and him's on this pontoon boat. And he's like, or always, he's like always, uh, he was kind of, uh, always worried about, you know, things he shouldn't be worried about. So, so I jumped in, we took the pontoon boat out on the lake and I jumped in the water and they thought I had drowned, but I was actually underneath the pontoon boat, you know? And so this is before I got married. And uh, what happened is I heard them saying, I, I don't understand where he's at. And he was panicking. He was thinking, oh, the cops are going to think it was me. He's going to be questioned. Well, he was kind of sick at the time. So the doctors, he was he had cancer and all that. Jeez. At the time, I think, I'm pretty sure I think it was, I think he was sick at the time. I'm trying to remember Exactly, I think he was. So, so here I am. Uh, I made my body float up to the surface, face down, like I was dead. <laughs> and he's telling my wife, "I'm not getting him. I, I, I'm not doing. I'm not touching it. They're gonna think it was me." He was getting all paranoid, and I could hold my breath for quite a long time. And my wife was starting to cry. <laughs> I said, you know, I held my breath as long as I could. And I turned over and I said, surprise. <laughs> so, so I was like, you son of a bitch. Hmm. We, thought you, we, we thought you were dead. I'm like, I know. I said, it's a hoax. <laughs> you know, so what happened is, uh, uh, it was the next year later, me and my wife were on the boat. And uh, we hear this drum noise. Out in the middle of the lake, we hear this drum noise. I'm like, you hear this? She goes, yeah. I said, I said that's drum. She goes, yes. But it wasn't from, like, the shoreline. It was, like, right next to us, like, on the boat. Mm -hmm. Like, playing, like, drums. Like, hitting the toms. Boom, 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 boom. I said, I said well, it looks like that prank guy back, <laughs> backfired on me. I said, uh. I said, you heard it, I heard it, and we were, it was right here in front of us. I said, uh, I'm not hallucinating. She goes, yeah. I said, I said maybe uh, that prank I pulled on Wayne way back, you know, maybe he's getting me back, I don't know. But, uh, I mean, that's what happened. It was like, and nothing had, had happened ever since that. How, how did, did, he, uh, did he recover from his cancer? Oh, he died in... Like a year later, yeah, he could. It was really bad, and I went out to see him in Vegas, and um, he was, he was, yeah, he was my best friend, and so after he died, it's like, when you lose your best friend like that, nothing really can replace that, and I haven't really found nobody. I've met a lot of people, and I thought, well, maybe he'll. This guy is kind of that type of guy, and. uh like when you meet certain people, like, oh, we'll be friends for life. Well, not if they don't live. So when they die, it's like, uh, you know, now what? You know, he's gone. Yeah. You know? So that was 04. I was like, so I told my wife, I said, uh, you know, I've met other people. And it's like, they just, you know, this guy was like, a, he was 16 years older than I was. So he was like a dad to me. And we could play music, and he would, you know, huh? sometimes he'd get mad, then he was, uh, you know, then we were friends again, or, you know, but he was really uh, kind of like a dad, you know. So after he died, it was like, you know, you'll never find anybody like that, you know. Yeah. So recently, in the last eight years, I thought I found someone like that, and... It turned out they really weren't that a friend like he was, and 
um, you know, this friend that I recently had been around, uh, I mean, him recently played a, a good prank on somebody down in the cabins way past Mohican and four of us got a cabin and uh, went camping some type of retreat you know so so what I did is I had these uh, I pre-recorded some deep really guttural alligator sounds so I put them on this player and I hide my player like this little speaker, it's real small, but it's powerful. I put it pointing towards the wall, you know, by the couch in that corner. So everybody's in the other room. They're all in their, you know, get everybody gets in their bunk bed. And they hear this, like, real, like it's shaking the walls. And everybody pops up their head, like, what is that? What is that? I said, I said guys, stay down. Don't move. Don't say a word. I said, it's here. They said, what's here? I said, the thing. Then, well, what, what, what thing? Everybody's like, what the heck is that? I said, I said, guys, that's no bear. I said, just be quiet and just pray. Everybody start praying. So everybody's praying. So, you know, Frank gets up and he's praying. He puts on his shirt. I said, what are you doing? I said, because I'm putting my shirt on in case I got to run. I said, dude, the thing's like right outside the door. I said, you're not going nowhere. He goes, oh, yeah, I, it was just stupid. He puts his shirt on like that's going to protect him. Mm-hmm. So this other Italian guy, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> there's two, you know, there's four of us. So me and my friend are in on this, you know. <clears throat> he's got his head buried in the pillow laughing his head off. And uh, so he's playing along with it. So uh, we said <sighs> they were so scared. They were gonna call nine one one. So now you're gonna. Call, I said, you realize how stupid that's gonna be. The, the police are gonna come out, and there's gonna be no creature, or whatever this thing is growling. I said, you already know it's. And I'm telling them, you know, this is not a bear. Listen, how guttural this thing is. And it's like I said, bears don't sound like that, and they, there's no bears in this area. So. By saying this, we convince, you know, repeating that, we convince them that it's not a bear and this is something supernatural. So they're scared and um, every little noise is like, you know, they're waking up. So they're all freaked out and trying to call this. I said, you know, just pray and ignore it and, you know. So the next morning they all run down the hill to the other guy's campsite. We heard this creature, blah, blah, blah. And they're all looking at him like, yeah, you guys are, you know, this is, you guys are crazy, you know. So, the, you know, they all went home and um, told their wives and family. And to this day, we haven't told them what we did. In fact, next year, we want to make it better. You know, he's like, well, we need to stick mannequins in the woods with wires and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, I'll think of something, you know. If I'm up to it, and we'll we'll see. But it, you know, there's an adrenaline when you pull a prank like that to see that you know, wow, they you know they took a hook, line, and sinker. You know, this guy's up on his bunk, he gets his knife out, and I said, "What are you gonna do with that?" I said, "Whatever that thing out there is, hoax, so, so hideous, it'll tear you apart." And so I get off, I get off out of the bunk bed, and I start walking over there. But it stops growling because I knew on the recorder when the when it would stop and go down and come back. So I had it timed out. So when I come back to my bunk bed, it starts all over again. So I had it going a few minutes and it would stop. You know, I had it all timed out. And uh, you're crazy going out there in the because it was it was it was a little cabin. It was probably like 300 square feet. It's just two two rooms, you know. So we're all in the back room looking at the the door, the main entrance door, and they're all scared. And so, I mean, so this, you know, it's been a year and we haven't told them yet, you know. Mm. And I want to I tell them, if 
because that's kind of the fun part when you tell somebody. It's like telling a joke and okay, here's the punchline. Well, I've had a... Sometimes I don't tell people the punchline until many years down the road, you know? And... So, uh... So all these pranks, you know, it's kind of like a... Uh, it can be an addiction, you know? It's like an, an adrenaline rush, you know? And I pulled them off so well, it's like... But that second video I sent you... Like, I mean, I knew within I wanted, yeah, I wanted I knew within how, an hour it was you. You remember I did? Because, man, it yeah, looks an it, awful lot like you. Didn't I remember that saying right, that? Right, And I had sent you that picture of my great-grandpa who looks a lot like me. And I threw that card on the table to see if you would buy it or not. Because we do look a lot alike. It's kind of like, wow. And I was kind of like convincing you he's back from the dead. And he, that's him, you know. I don't know if you remember that picture I sent. Well, I didn't believe that part. No way in hell. Yeah. Nobody comes well, back from the dead. So <laughs> hey, listen. So uh, what would kind of makeup? What kind of makeup did you use for that? Oh, let's see. What kind of? What did you use as a costume and all that? I'm trying to think what I used on the. Uh, I think it was like um, the first time. It was like a plaster. And I'm trying the, the second time. I'm trying to remember what I had. I thought I thought it was a plaster. Seems I, like something like that. I mean, you could still yeah, because you still yeah. could tell that you're wearing underwear and um. <laughs> well, yeah. And and the way you, your hair was greased back and all that with and all that kind of stuff and I was like. I'm just looking at that face, and I'm like, I know that face, and, and I know those arms. The reason I know those arms is because you came here and visited me. Right. Yeah, so, and I spent a lot of time on that second video. Yeah. And what can what 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 I why I decided to do it is because of the first video. And because um, you know it'd be hard to believe that somebody would uh, try to pull off what you did with somebody. Like me, I mean, I thought we had a decent relationship. And I thought you were, you know, going. You went through what I went through. I thought we were on the same page. You came to my own house. You drove two and a half hours to do it. Right. So I mean, you put a lot of energy in to try to, I guess. Well, make well, it. what's stra what's strange about it is I, I've, I've had real encounters, but I still did this video, and a lot of people, I guess there's only one me in the world that would do something like that. Like you met, you even mentioned on your video. It turns out there's not a lot of these. Um, People big, really have big encounters. footers. Big footers seem to do that. I noticed a couple of them, the big name ones. Yeah. They have their one real one, and then for some reason yeah. they become obsessed with <laughs> trying to prove that it's real, and so they end up, uh, you know, having somebody walk around in a costume like their wife or a friend or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I was even gonna compliment even think about having a part three where it comes off and has a cup of tea and yeah all this nonsense <laughs> a friend was like saying oh you need to have it come up to the table and you know have it some cookies and milk out there and it comes out and drink <laughs> you know <laughs> that was the next step you know i just I think it becomes your pet or something this one yeah yeah part of the problem with the first the second one too is you it was too you're, you're too close to the camera so you can see too much of yeah, the details I, so i was like and once i enhanced it i spaced i you know i wasted a, a lot of time on that video in my life but um i guess there's good lessons to be learned from like i said i forgive you for what you've done i i you you, you considered a prank and an experiment and um well, at least you're coming because, out. At least you're coming out now. So you, you, know, you, you know, know what they say, uh, "Prank gone wild." Yeah, <laughs> bad, bad pranks gone wild. But I was getting calls from like History Channel, and they wanted to put it on my show. So I was thinking about using that to expose them. Like, well, if this is a hoax, uh, I'll tell the world that all your other videos are a hoax. You see, what I'm saying if they're so quick to take me they wanted to give me seven hundred dollars for the video uh so 
if you're believing this, so the other stuff that you show is a hoax. Why would I believe your other stuff? And that could really damage them as, you know, whatever these people that had approached me. And I had told them about that, you know. So I, I had thought about doing that, you know. And uh, basically, I could have said, give me 10 grand or else I'm coming forward and ruin your reputation with all your other hoax videos. Because you came to me thinking my video was real. Well, if if you think so mine's do, real, then do you yeah, think you, that do you think all these videos about Bigfoot are, are hoaxes? No, I I've studied a lot of the Thunker Thinker and the different movements and mechanics of this thing, you know, here and there, and it's like they all have that similar, uh, like this ninety degree shin rise and all that stuff. So I'm I'm convinced that you know it's a real. You so know, sometimes, so, so sometimes oh, yeah. there are real, legit videos. Okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's just people like me that ruin it because I come out with a prank one and it kind of like throws everyone off, you know. So that's. But now I'm really, I'm, I guess I'm really good at spotting. A, you know, a prank video. You know, all my experience with my video and how they do this and. You know, everybody said, oh, you had CGI. I'm like, no, I didn't. I just had an iPad in the window. <laughs> I don't know nothing about computers. But the experts will say, so that was a lesson. The experts can a lot of times be wrong, you know. But it, <clears throat> but I thought Thinker Thunker did really good. With well, it definitely wasn't CGI. There's no yeah. way in hell you could do that with CGI. But there definitely you could do uh, a guy, although the one thing that's amazing is the movement. I don't that's was you did a really good job with the movement because that yeah. that almost made it but then again with having that that screen between you and the camera that that enhances the the, the strangeness of the movement now doesn't it yeah and if there was no you know, screen there it would maybe uh it'd look it'd be easier to spot Rob. Right? um from that distance <clears throat> i probably may have been able to pull it off even from that distance now the second one was kind of like the me, head, like, the head twerking too, man. That was crazy how he did that. That was the, the, yeah. the head movement. That was crazy, yep. man. Crazy, like you know, you think it, it's really like psychotic, crazy movement. So yeah, it it, um, it was kind of like uh, it took some effort to be able to move like that. And I so here's walk. the question: how, how you know you spend all that time putting that stuff on, and you don't know what it is? Really... What's that? You put all that white stuff on you, and you're not sure what it is. I. I mean, well, you spent a lot of time, time putting it all over, and spent a lot of time and money on it, so you got to know it what it a, is. It was a plaster. I, I had some plaster mix. Was for, people... for what was the plaster mix originally for? Uh, what they put on plaster board. Yeah. That that must have felt like crap. <laughs> well, it, well, it sticks and it does. You know, it's uh, it just rinses off. You gotta. Yeah, but when know. it dries up on you like that, it must feel kind of crap. Yeah, just keep rinsing. I I pretty much I think that's what I used the second time too. Well, it certainly looks like that or something that the you know. I think I might have used a different... Well, they do the Hollywood... I thought... The first thing I thought is... Did he get a bunch of stuff from Hollywood... From, like, some Halloween store... And just put all this, like, white paint... With plaster or something on it, you know? And, and part two was, like, a... Uh, how close I could come from being ridiculous... Before I was called out, you know? And it's crazy that you actually called me... And asked me to pray for you... <laughs> Yeah, and what's convincing is because you're talking live, so that would convince you that if I'm in here, then who's out there? And that's the whole that was the whole part of the trick, you know. It's like okay. Well, that's it's 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 you yeah. know in some ways it's very instructive for us in the future now, isn't it? Yeah. And, and nobody, we see, nobody, and we ever see anything like that again. And if if somebody is willing to go the efforts that you went through to try to pull off what you call as a prank, 
what would you know somebody else that had maybe a little more money and time try to oh, pull it off? Oh yeah, I mean I I could give you ideas. I like Patty, uh, like the Patterson film. Well, how about if that could possibly? Is there any possibility that that was? I don't, I don't. I don't think so. It's just because of because of the uh, you know the muscle and the legs and bulging muscles and the mechanics of it because they all have that similar cartoon walk to their hips when they run and it's like it's, it's hard for a human it, being to do what they say and um, it's amazing yeah it's just although there's there's human beings that can do all sorts of amazing acrobatics and have amazing yeah. strength and body strength and there always could be that one person or two that it could pull off something of those looks like that right uh, being that old I can't, I can't see no suit that is that realistic <laughs> well I, mean, even I, 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 don't, I don't I honestly now I'm not saying the Patterson film is fake but I will say that the argument about uh, there wasn't that kind of Costume, costume technology back then for Hollywood and Laurel Canyon and the Tapestech Institute and all the yeah. billions of right. dollars they put in. There is no reason. There's no reason to think. And, and you count. And you see the same people that tell us over and over again that the military and the government is 50 years ahead of us in technology. Uh -huh. So there's no reason really to say in the day, because we really don't know. If they didn't have such technology, right? Right. You know, so the argument is pretty. It's not. It's baseless. The whole idea that they didn't have costume technology back then because we don't know. We have no idea. We have no idea what what, what kind of because you know they fake everything, dude. Yeah. Talk about prankster when it comes to being a prankster. <laughs> did, you, did you get a job in the government or for NASA or you know some? government agency you know what i mean all the f fake false flag and the fake shootings and everything else is ridiculous there's a lot of people yeah. out there just you know i'm part of human condition i guess so but, you know, you're so basically what you're admitting flat out is that the first all both two it videos were faked you you just just prank and you're just like yeah you know just having fun and it just went too far and then the adrenaline rush of getting the attention and trying to fake people and I guess mm -hmm. killing time. <clears throat> right. Um, you know, it's I, kinda, it's so, kind of so, cool. okay. Um, I got a question for you as well, yeah. since I'm just asking questions. I know I said this. Now the grunts, the grunts video I sent you was real. I, I, I posted that to your video. In the the grunts video. Well, it's probably if you say so. I mean, I don't I, know. I, I, I mean, what time do I mean? Okay, if you say so, yeah, I believe you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sure. I hope it's not uh, you know, I mean, probably probably the way what you call an experiment or pranking. <laughs> most people would call being lying. Right. Right. <laughs> Deceiving right. people. I mean, you might think it's all fun, but. You know, for right. other people, it could be, you know, it's just flat out lying. You know, as, as, as a Christian, I think it's fascinating. And you're a guy that writes these Christian songs and plays these Christian songs. Do exactly. You, do you think that's right as a Christian to call up or basically mock Jesus through these fake <sighs> deliverance prayers? Um, you got to remember, I wasn't saying those prayers and I didn't. I couldn't tell him shut up, shut up, because then it would be like the heat. The, no, no, you know, no. You, you, you asked. You said, "Yeah, you wanted to pray," yeah, and you, prayed. you also said that for me as well. So, you know, right. so you yeah, might not would. have prayed, but you made us pray. And yeah, I just exactly. wondering, and I'm just wondering, you know, as a Christian, if you're, yeah. I, mean, if, I mean, I don't care if you're a Christian one bit or not. That's your business. But as a Christian, I'm asking you. Do you think that that's very Christian-like? I, I had talked to my brother-in-law about that, and I probably, um, 
I know what you're saying in a well, way. I want to explain something to you as well because there's other people that have come up and reached out to me. Right. And I had to explain, you know, I've been, I gave you two years. I wasn't, got, you know, I, I had it up for a year. I was like, you know, yeah. we'll see what happens. And after a year, I'm going to take it down. In fact, I, I didn't even have to. The the uh, Facebook took my channel down, so I didn't even have to bother doing it. They yeah. did it to me. But I did right. take it down bit shoot, and, um, and I gave two years for you to say something. Because, you know, I figured we were friends, and, you know, I'm not out to screw you over. And so... Right. I was waiting for you to come out. Eventually, I just said, you know, it's been two years, and I just got to warn other people about this. Because people were coming to me from all over the world, believe it or not. And <laughs> saying, wow, Jeez. this is an amazing <laughs> video. Not the second one, but the first one in particular. Right. About the power and the prayer. And how, G you know, the name of Jesus and how they drove those those entities out. Now, listen, let me, there's a couple things. Right. By... You know, us all being involved with this, you know, if I would have known that we were pulling off a prank, I never would have disrespected my God. Nor would, would I, because if you think about the consequences of what's going on, they're not people They could be messing around with real entities, mm -hmm. real forces, spiritual forces, which I know are real. And the things have just been revealed to me because I took like two years off the whole damn thing after 2019. I didn't do anything. I focused right. on the scamdemic and yeah. then, you know, that was going on in Canada and then, uh, and then Ukraine. And then I had enough of all those that all those pranks in which people are dying. And, and I so I went back into this Bigfoot thing to see if there's mm -hmm. some kind of connection between everything that's going on. And I'm right. thinking, you know. Could somebody get hurt? Let's say this is all BS because I've noticed, I've noticed, the vast majority, and I'm a Christian that believes in the power of prayer and believes in Jesus Christ, but I have to say the vast majority of what I witnessed uh -huh. were 100% hoaxes or people faking it or conning people. Mm -hmm. Pretending that they were delivering people, taking out uh, spirits and demons, uh, driving spirits and all that away. And mm -hmm. um, this is, I mean, people would get themselves hurt by all this, don't you think? All right. You know, if people think that all they do is call on the name of Jesus and then the day it doesn't work with these things. Well, my brother in law, who I had called in the first video, um, actually had has experiences with you know deliverance ministry years ago and yes so he was doing all the praying I was like uh oh it's like you know. well that's what made it all convincing <clears throat> yeah, yeah honestly really, at the end of the day yeah. if it wasn't the praying then you calling up your your your, your brother-in-law and you know getting them to pray I, I think that the weight of that video would have died or diminished by 50%. Hmm. If without that, the conversation, the prayer to make it look legit, because no one in, would believe that, hey, yeah, let's fake that all and call somebody, but, you know, the pastor and fake it all. And, you know, and people are all looking for answers, even to this day, and how to deal with these things and what the interactions they have, or what they call Bigfoot or yeah. Dogman and all that stuff, which I think is all part of the deception too but i think right. we're dealing with the spirits of clean spirits and four spirits of all kinds and they've been there forever the, right just all like right. the part of the deception is everyone's looking for footprints which can easily be faked by a guy but if you want to film these spirits for real i discovered you have to point your camera up into the trees when there's leaves mm -hmm. and all that and then you start to find some amazing entities, and it's like there's a connection between the spirit realm and, and the trees. And then, of course, then you start sharing that with people, and because everyone's been lied to and convinced that there's some flesh and blood monster out there, when you tell them the truth, like what I'm trying to tell, that everyone thinks makes fun of you. You know what I mean? So, I, my, I guess my point being all this is. I guess you really don't even have to answer the question because it's self-evident. I mean, people can get hurt by people uh, 
Pulling these, what you want to call as a, a, a prank. Seriously, you hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah, I had. I tried to take it down. Yeah. I, I, well, if you can't take I, it down, just take down the whole channel. Start over. I, yeah, I, I don't even have access to the channel, so it was like, oh no, you know. Like you said, I felt bad, and I talked to my brother-in-law. Why I shouldn't have done that? And, um, I said, you know, I wish I could access to log into that channel. I could, I can't even take nothing down on that channel. I don't. I think at the time I had done it on a different device. You know. You don't remember the. You don't remember don't, the the, the uh, password and all that and. It was by a different did, you, did you try to ask YouTube for uh, what to do about it? Yeah, and I get these. Uh, don't, did, you, did you really? It's very hard to get a hold of them if you message them. Yeah. But yeah so but, it's like, I mean, I wish I could get in there and erase it, but like you said, everybody else has got the copy of the video. Yeah, it's out there in the ether, that's for sure. You did it's for <laughs> sure. Which nothing is another thing of learning a lesson too is about uh, mirroring other videos simply for hits. You know, like when I did this stuff and I said, Okay, it's not real, I knew no one was gonna watch my videos. I knew <laughs> they weren't gonna get I'd be lucky to get a couple hundred because I'm totally one hundred percent blacklisted. Um, shadow band. Uh, I no one's no one even knows my channel even exists anymore. I right. only got like 150 subs on YouTube now. So you know it's not like I or even, not even that. There's like 140 or maybe if that. All right. I went from 4,000 to just nothing, and most of those were people that you know found me. By accident or through via bit shoot. So, but anyways, yeah. um, I know, well, at least map. we at least we now know that you flat out faked it. You use sounds to me like plaster and white costume paint, and, and um, you did some pretty clever things. It sounds like something that's also that's something you got a history of as far as pranking people, which you admitted. Yeah, and you know, you know, I, you know, when I first, when I, I was like, I wasn't really mad at you. Actually, I, I haven't really been mad at. The only time I really like, you know, man, it's kind of that was kind of prickish what he did was actually right. um, today. You know, when you or the past forty four hours when you you reached out and messaged, yeah. I was like, the what? Ah, Okay, he is alive, and I wonder why you know he wasn't he returning phone calls, and all that. And I don't know why you just you could have just told me the truth, but I don't know why you felt you needed to do that. But I guess it must be part of the prank, as you say, it's part of the experiment, the, the, the grand lie, <laughs> the grand. grand deception. But the uh, grand hope. I mean, that's what you called it on YouTube. You said it's, uh, just, it's, it's, it was experimenting. It was taking experiment. It was like. I like really. Yeah. What else? What other bullshit are you gonna tell me as well? <laughs> experiment. This is an experiment. Some kid in his suit down you, the road. I, I, you know, if you were doing a psychological or a study or a study on human behavior on the internet and how people respond to these videos because right. you know right amount of time not too much don't not a lot of thought or an analytical thought involved most people want just like you said you wanted yeah. basically that rush that dopamine rush and that's what pretty much all the internet is for most people a dopamine a dopamine rush and no one's just no, hardly you find anybody that's really seriously uh doing any and and inquiry and investigation about any matter and when they do they're never going to be very popular so the more dumbed right. down and shallow of your presentation is about something the more it seems that people really want it to be you know what i mean it's part of our right. our you know just entertain us please don't yeah. don't educate us 
<laughs> yeah, I find this true with even the, the Bigfoot community and definitely the the Christian community. So, and let's go back to this whole thing about being Christian too. And I say, you know, because uh, are you really a Christian? Right. I'm asking you a serious question. Are you really a Christian, or are you just faking that too? No, I really am. I just wondered, what do you think people are going to think about Christians when they find out about this? How's that going to make Christians look? Well, that's that's why I wanted to take it down. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like, it's one of those things, and it's a self-evident question, but it's also something they're not blaming it fully on you but, because but, the vast majority of Christendom, the hypocrisy, the two-facedness, that the, the uh, you know what I mean? It's one thing to to make a prank and then turn around, you know, oh, you know, hey, listen, what happened last night was a joke. You know what I mean? Right. You know what I mean? But to let it go on and on and on. And I'm going to tell you, you know, as a prankster, you have a little bit of poor judgment and taste. I mean, it's your friend dying. There goes the toilet. And a friend you know, dying, and you did that to him when it was a year before his death, and right before your dad's deathbed. I mean, man, for a Christian, your sensitivity of, of doing the right thing at the right time is questionable, man. No, my timing is off. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> you know, there's a name for all that. You know what it is? No. Being a prick. <laughs> and that's what it is. You know, when you only you think about yourself and nobody else, the self-centeredness is a bit of a sociopathic behavior. You know, I, I gotta ask you a serious question: Have you ever like been diagnosed with anything particular? Um. Not as really. a kid, as an adult, I mean, were you ever, ever a bit of borderline sociopath, borderline personality <laughs> disorder? No, I'm dead serious because what you did and the timings <laughs> that you did things are uh, bizarre. And you, and so you, for and if you think that the world's really or anybody's going to believe you that you had an encounter of any kind yep. now, it's out the window. There's no yep. one going to believe you, right? Who finds out right. about this? Right. There's, there's your, your credibility is. No one's gonna take you serious about any of it. Although right. I must say, if everyone needs to find somebody to, to pull off a good prank, you're the dude. <laughs> 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 right. right. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of our brothers who are Satanists, and those are you would say, "Wow, this guy, I'm hang out with him. He's really Christian. Oh man, it ruins everything." So, because <laughs> no, I mean, there's a lot of like, uh, you know, there's a lot of shady characters in the Bigfoot community. A lot of shady characters. A lot of people that have, would have no problem pulling off a prank. Huh. A lot of people. And therefore, when people like me, and we start showing people like things, they, they can't. It all ends up pareidolia, pareidolia, pareidolia. They can't, you know, there's no way of breaking through the the um, the wall that's been created right. deliberately. And I I do believe that the Bigfoot community is specifically designed to uh, crush anything that was left of, say, the knowledge of the spiritual realm, right? The Native right. Americans, you know, the wars... Hmm. The American Indian Wars didn't officially officially end in the in 1920s. Only within the end right. of a generation, they're pulling off the Patterson film. How did they actually go about that? You know, there's questions of something very wicked and evil that happened. Right. Now, either the wicked right. symphonists is that it was a fake, or there's they did something like some evil, like blood sacrifice stuff that make this thing come out from right. the other side, you know what I mean? But um, right. regardless, with all the hoaxing and all the mocking and, and, and all the disinformation, it's been amazing how it's been muddied the water to the point that when somebody like my, see if myself is like, hey, these are the real images that I'm filming. This is really what's happening. No one can, can tolerate or even listen to it. 
You know what I mean? They don't want to hear it because they totally think they, the first thing they go is paranoia, paranoia, paranoia. And next thing, oh, it's spirits. I don't hear spirits. Right. And then they go woo and they go this. And you're like, man, you guys are messing with stuff and you have no idea if you're really even messing at all with it. And, and a lot of people. Yeah. You know, and I understand, you know, you know, a lot of people want to make fun of it. I made fun of it. I didn't believe in it until I experienced it, right? <laughs> Right. So now but, like, you know, I had I had asked that question that, you know, if if I was standing before God and he asked me off that video, what I truly tell him? And my answer would be it was just a hoax on my brother-in-law just to get my kicks and giggles. It wasn't too, like... Are you going to be funny? Just, and then Jesus turns yeah. around so well, welcome into heaven. Oh, cool. Ha, ah, just a hoax, dude. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> just a hoax. Yeah, the keys, yeah, you're not really going to New Jerusalem, man. Well, well, yeah. get in line to, to the Lake of Fire for you, buddy. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I'm not saying this was going to happen. You know what I mean? But I will right. say th that you betrayed our friendship. You and I are, are probably never going to be a friend again. We could have been if you would have been open about it, and you would have been open a long time ago. I said, okay, okay, I would, I would understand you, but you got to give you two uh, two years. In which you never returned a phone call or got back to me. That's, that's because, more. That, that is more than just pulling a prank, dude. I invited, I invited you into my home. That's because I knew you had it figured out, and I didn't know how to respond back to somebody that had me call, busted yeah, out. So there's a thing, dude. <laughs> okay, there's called friendships, if they're real, right. at least. And maybe that was a prank too, an illusion. Which is fine. I mean, I mean, it, in the day, you don't have to want to be my friend or like me. I mean, you wait in line. You know what I mean? There's a long, long line of people that don't want anything to do with me. But the fact of the matter is, is that you and I talked on the phone numerous times. Right. And in we had, you know, what I thought were honest conversations, and you, and you were reaching out to me long before that call. Is this for, the Australian dude? No, that's I'm doing. I'm talking to somebody else. And, we, and, and, you, and you were actually talking to me about other things, like spiritual things and all this and that. And you know, and you asked me several times to pray for you and all that. That had nothing, nothing to do with the video, right? And you did do that. And we talked, and I so for you to do what you did was more than just a prank to me. That was betrayal of our friendship that we no longer have. But that I'm saying that I forgive you. Now, this is going to sound like a uh, contradiction. I do forgive you. I don't hate you. But the problem is right. I can't trust you. That's what the problem <laughs> is. There's no trust. Where am I going to do? Hmm. What is it you, 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 what's the, you call me up the next time and there's something going on. Okay. Well, the is, boy, the is, boy is it, a cried wolf, you mean? Well, it's more than that. Yeah. It's worse than that. It's worse than that. Yeah. It can't, it can't get worse than that. <laughs> well, it's worse, you know. It's so, and here's the thing. Um, it's You know, you're willing to exploit me and your our friendship. That's even worse. You're willing to think, do that. And you might not think... think if you think that think didn't, that, ha if you don't think that happened, you need to take a serious look at what you actually did. Well, that part two video was not just for you. I, I just randomly did produce that. And you put me in it, and you made me look at it, and you made me look, uh, investigate it, and you made me waste a lot of time, and you made me put a video up. And you could have just said all that stuff and said, Mike, you know, and all of that, all those people that have called up and said about that first video and they, they put their hope and faith in, oh, this might be a real example of really how the spirit of God works. How, you know, how prayer works. When, how many people are going to have, have their faith shattered from that when they find out or questioned again? You know, I mean, it's already fragile as it was. And now, I mean, the thing is, not only did you portray our friendship, but you also portrayed a lot of other people. There's a time 
when a f- prank is truly just a prank, mm-hmm. then there's a time when it's just a bullshit, prickish lie. In which you took advantage of other people and are still doing that. And there's well, nothing there's... for you to feel good about, except for the fact that if you have pride in the fact that you're willing to con a whole bunch of stupid people, and which, by the way, it doesn't take very much to do that, and we can just look at the past two years and how the whole damn world decided to shut down and take a poisonous investment. <laughs> right? Yeah. So you got to remember, there's so, many other vi- there's many other videos that I'm, uh, how would you say, responsible that are, for that are out there that are pranks that I have helped produce with other people. Yeah. And to go to go to these people. And say, you know, we need to take that video down that I helped you hoax. You know, there's like probably a dozen of them out there. And not under my should, not under my name, but you should under do his. that. You should do that. You should not only do that. You should do a video on your own channel, right? And hook it to that video, and say, "Listen, folks, I was just a hoax." All of them. Yeah, I think you should tell people the truth what you did. I mean, if you got a million freaking views on your computer, on your one channel alone, how many other millions of people have seen that thing? The sooner we stop the spread of this lie, the better. It, it, it just actually could... Actually, somebody could die from this. I don't know if you realize that, right? There'd be some crazy no. Yahoo go out there and, you know, and start thinking they could do this that and the other and praying and all that next thing you know whatever these things are decide to show up and it's like hey we're gonna have you for lunch all right you mean ghost you mean ghost yeah spirits yeah unclean spirits you know what i mean yeah right so, anyways, I gotta let you go because my son's here and I gotta cook dinner for him. I do appreciate talking to you, and I don't hate you, buddy. And 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 I and I, I um, and I genuinely forgive you, and I hope the best for you. But I, you know, what is yeah. is what is, and you know, it's just it's. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna not talk to you again if you reach out, but I ain't reaching out to you for nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. You hear what I'm saying? It was good talking the, to you, Rick. It really was. And I'm glad that you were willing to share a little bit of the truth and you're willing to open up. And believe me, you know what? Some, you know what it's like living with yeah. a lie and when you let go of that, that baggage. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, some people might give you a hard time for it. You don't know them from Adam anyway, so what does it matter, right? So just move on with your life. Well, I, I had thought maybe it's best that people believe that I believe that was real so they don't so I don't give God a bad name you know you know what I'm saying uh oh really well, that's some twisted yeah. logic man I tell well, you, you it was, oh, it's called the noble lie keep the you know why the reason why this world is so fucked up dude is because it's lie after lie after lie it's all based on the noble lie it's best that people don't know the truth when it's f- the furthest thing from it you know, like the uh, don't be like the rest of them, dude. It's one thing to pull a, a prank, but I know that there's a good side to Rick from what I've talked to, and don't poison it with that kind of stupid talk and that kind of rationality. Don't, don't screw your head up with that, just let it go, move on. I would say something you do what you want to do, but if I were you, I'd say, Listen, I pulled a prank on you guys, it's time to move on. You know, and they're, they're not, you don't know them from Adam. The best thing is. That you just say hope the truth and then move on. Just hope they don't watch it again and hope they forget it. Well, I mean, it's a powerful lesson and it's a powerful example of how easy it is for us to be tricked, to be fooled, to be right. see, deceived. And I, I, it makes it even more understandable for me, of me trying to share things with people and them just saying, oh, bullshit. To me, about me, you know what I mean? You know, I know I'm not lying to anybody. It's not even my nature to do that, period. Mm-hmm. To, to a fault, admittedly, maybe, maybe not. To a fault. Right. But the thing is, um, yeah, it's, 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 it, it's the combination, the compounding of 
is a compounding of interest over and over again, of lie upon lie upon lie, until nobody trusts anybody. You know what I mean? A bit of, you know, if you're la if you were to label it to your your YouTube, you know, or, you know, about as far as a description, you know, um, I am a magician. I'm a trickster. I'm a hoaxer. I'm good at the, you know what I mean? In fact, to be honest with you, um, geez, just imagine what, how you could have gone if, really could have gone if you would have been able to promote your ability to hoax. You know what I mean? Like all these other channels where they pull pranks on everybody. Who knows? You could have a million followers mm -hmm. now because, man, that guy's really good at, at pranking people or just or fooling people. And there'd probably be many people following yeah. you. You know what I mean? Sometimes the best thing. And actually, do it. Yeah. And actually teach them how to do it. Well, there you go. There, start a new channel yeah. showing them that. And the first thing you started out with is a new channel about hoax and how the hoax people is. Hey, how I hoaxed Bigfoot or how I hoaxed a guard girl in my backyard and fooled everybody, including Michael Adams. Have you have you noticed the title that I used for that thing when I said, "Look, whatever this gargoyle." That, that was like the stupidest, lamest name I could come up with. Something a gargoyle. Well, the second one you called it the evil creature in the backyard. I like them. right. Yeah. Well, because obviously you couldn't pull off the gargoyle thing. That's for sure. <laughs> and here's the thing, you know, because those of us who've actually witnessed how quote-unquote Bigfoot and all these things that we call Bigfoot behave when you actually really have an encounter it's easy to see how like the first one could possibly be that yeah especially the way it, how fuzzy it was based on the screen and all that made it really fuzzy because most of our encounters are really not that detailed like the second one you know what I mean the second yeah. one you're not going to be able to, need to see all the detail like you did in the second one but you did a good job. You fooled me. You fooled, you know, a lot of other people. I, I don't know. I fire you. A, you just part of the process of a healing uh, is making amends with people. Just saying, you know what? I screwed. I, it, you know, it, I, I'm sorry. I made it. I, 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 I pulled a prank on you. And just move on. You know what I mean? And, you know, right. maybe... You know, you're a very talented musician. You're very talented in a lot of ways, I can tell. And so, you know, it's not that far-fetched for a guy like you to pull off what you pull off. You know what I mean? And get away with it. And so, um, such well, a, I have to let you go, man, because my son's got an art class in about eight minutes, and I have to help cook and all that. So, all right, I, I, and he just got up from school. All right, we'll talk to you later, man. It's good talking to you. Maybe later. Maybe some other time, all right? All right, watch that video I sent on your comment section. Okay. It's, Take care, yeah. Rick. It's, uh, I think so. Rick Grebenek, who was once my friend, Grebenek, just admitted that the two quote-unquote Bigfoot gargoyle evil creature videos that he did in his backyard are 100% him and fake. What is to anyone to say? I'll come back to this later. I don't know how much time I put in this. And of course, he didn't ask me if I recorded this, but of course I did record it to cover my own butt. <laughs>